You can win on defense when people come to your meetings and complain. Or they complain in email, or they complain on phone, uh, phone calls. Um, so the first trick for handling complaints is to slow the complaint down, which is counterintuitive because when somebody punches you in the gut, reflexively you want to punch them in the gut. It's not about being nice to the other person when they're hurting you. Uh, so this idea of slowing it down is tremendously effective. And I didn't believe it when I heard it, and then I tried it a few times, and I'm like, gosh, this works like magic. So the person calls, and remember, think about how this sets up now. They've been locked and loaded all night. They went to bed with this ambush in mind, right? You don't even know it's coming at 9.05 the next morning, but they're locked and loaded, they're ready for you, and they start the, day, the dump. And you say, excuse me, I didn't get your name. Could you give me your name and maybe the spelling? And there's a little uncomfortable moment, and they say to themselves, oh my gosh, I didn't even tell them who I am. I'm so angry, I forgot to tell them who I am. And then the guy goes, Tom, with a T. <laughs> right? But you've slowed it down. Psychologists call this reframing, right? And, but again, it's counterintuitive. You don't think because you're under fire, right? Um, and then you would ask questions. You keep showing interest. When you show interest in others, others will eventually show interest in you. This is the law of reciprocity. It works every single time, but you've got to hang in there. Tell me more. Who did you talk to? When did this happen? Do you have a record of it? Do you have something you can show me other than what you remember? Do you have a video, photograph, something like this, right? This is data, not drama. And then you do something exceptionally unique if you've got your act together. You thank the person for the complaint. You see, they think you're either gonna defend the complaint or you're going to somehow refute it. And when you do neither, the dance goes away. It takes two to tango and you're not dancing. You're just saying, thank you very much. I think someone at our table said that. You know, you gotta thank the person for reaching out. And what are they gonna say to that? You know, you. And I, I did a video about this. I was speaking to um, a Chamber of Commerce in Southern Indiana. And if you just uh, search on YouTube, my full name, the word complaint or complain, it's free, just look it up. And I'll run you through the whole demo. But it just takes all the wind out of their sails, you know, when you, when you thank them for, I sincerely, this has been the, like, the, how about this? This has been the best phone call I've had all month. Can you say that to somebody that just read you the riot act? Maybe, maybe. Maybe not. And then finally, you try to resolve the complaint, of course. But here's what I've learned about people who complain. They often aren't interested in resolution. They just want to complain. And that's a gift if you can realize that early in the game. Sometimes I actually say that to them. I use humor a lot. I say, you just wanted to complain about this, didn't you? And they go, yep. I go, good, thank you for calling. And we're done, man, it's great. You gotta read the situation right to do it. Some of you know, may know my old friend Jim Ellison. He is the former mayor of Royal Oak. Royal Oak's in the house. Hey, how are you? I recognize you, I think. How are you? I don't think Jim Ellison has ever lost uh, an election. He ran unopposed in Royal Oak more times than I can count. He's moved up the ladder now, and Jim Ellison uh, I, I've been telling this story all over the world. He's at a uh, State of the City address, and uh, somebody says to him, uh, a bunch of people in the room, including press, and somebody, it's Q&A, somebody stands up and starts launching into Mayor Ellison, launching into him. And Jim listened, he nodded his head, and the guy eventually had to take a breath after a couple of minutes, and Jim says, thank you for your comments. He says, I really appreciate you being here tonight. I understand you're unhappy. He says, here's what I'd like you to know. My job as mayor of Royal Oak is not to make everyone in the city happy. My job is to make decisions that are in the best long-term interest of our city. He got a standing ovation from everybody else in the room and the other guys sat down. Isn't that a great line? You can have it, man, use it. So, as I wrap up, um, relationship success is an interesting thing. Even the word success is interesting because success is one of those rare words that means one thing 
and the exact opposite. Success means leading the pack, but it also means following behind. I know that you're interested in leadership succession in your organization, so let's work on our internal relationships as well. Let's just not paint the bad guy as the, the outsider or the outlier in the community. We've got work to do within the organization. I think you would agree. I will also take a couple of questions, and then I have a quick goodbye story for you. We're going to keep you right on schedule tonight. Is there anything you'd like to, anything that, that uh, flagged for you tonight as we talked about these types of things? Yes, please. Michael, when they come in mass, you know, you could have 20, 30, maybe 40 people coming in, and they are a collective group. They've had their little organizational meeting at the coffee house or bar prior to coming in, yeah. and they're going to be going back there afterwards. How do you quell the tide? It's your game board. It's your meeting. And to the extent that you can have a rule set and some sort of protocol, I used the word decorum earlier, I like that word because it sounds civilized, that they have to play by your rules. It doesn't matter how many there are, only one person can talk at a time. You have a clock in some cases. The clock is your friend, right? Time is your friend. And uh, in worst case scenario, you, hopefully you've got a sergeant at arms or some way to, uh, to enforce uh, uh, problems. But I, I, don't, I don't concern myself with the number of people. I think it's an initially a shocker, but uh, eventually it all comes down to communication. I know it sounds easier to talk about this than to actually do it, so I appreciate your question. 